Hey, you guys, what is up? It is Taquisha, and this is our freedom song. And yes, what you see on this face is excitement because I've accomplished something so great. It is so great. It is so great. So I love frugal and I love budget friendly. I mean, that can mean different things for different people, but for me, it means cheap. <laughs> cheap, cheaper than what it would be if you bought it at the store, right? What has been accomplished is so great. If you are looking for some budget friendly ideas, this is definitely your place. This is your video right here to get inspired, to get some ideas. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a six foot round planter for little to no money. Like <laughs> using things that we already had and it worked, it worked. Do you know how hard it is to find a six foot planter? Like I looked on Amazon, I could find a four foot planter Home Depot, I looked on there. For the four foot planters that were about a foot tall, they were about 150. Um, so we've done this one, this is six foot, right? And it's two feet tall. And I'm telling you, little to no money. I'm so excited about it. I am so excited to share with you what I've done in hopes that it will encourage you to look around and see what it is that you have laying around that you can use to create something that you will love as well. So if you are excited about this spring season and everything that it has to offer, everything that you wanna go after with growing all the things, I hope that this video inspires you. Okay, so let me tell you about this space. Last year, I decided to make a watermelon patch right here and it didn't work out great I, for at least two things. I did not break up the ground well enough, I think, for the seeds to have a great space to grow. And the chickens, the chickens that kept breaking free and they would run to the front of the house and they would peck all the things they could peck. And so the chance for watermelon went out the door. My heart was sad because I love watermelon. This year is gonna be different. I'm gonna get me some watermelon this year. We all gonna see it. <laughs> Anyway, it's a huge space in the front of our porch. So I'm sitting on our porch and what you're gonna see is the space right in front of our porch. There's so many different places that you can actually successfully plant. And so this space is right in front of the porch and it gets tons of sun. And I want it to turn it into a raised garden bed. It's already the circle that it is. So surrounding it, that's all stone. And so there's no digging, well, there's digging it up, but I'm not digging it up, you know, because that wouldn't be frugal, right? So our circle is determined. And so I need it, it to be that specific size. Do you run into that problem where you have a space and you just need something to fit that specific area? Okay, so that's what happened. And I figured out how to customize a space using fencing. Yes, using fencing. So let me show you what it is that we have done. And I cannot wait for you to see the finished product. It turned out better than I thought it would. It really did. I'm excited about it. And so let me show you the process and how it turned out. Okay guys, so this is a four foot tall fence. And what I've done is I cut it in half. So um, it is going to be two feet tall. So for this bed, I only needed a piece of fencing that was going to be three feet long and four feet tall. Because cutting that in half and then attaching it together makes the bed six feet all the way around and two feet tall. Okay, so this is what this is looking like on the parts that they meet. I'm gonna attach these two together. We're gonna use pins to 
put this down in. Okay, so now that I have um, the circumference right, I am going to zip tie this together. So next I'm just gonna be using these landscape pins to pin the bottom of the fencing into the ground. Heavy. So the next thing I'm going to do is align the inside of this fence. Okay, so now that that liner is cut, we are going to start filling it with things like pine cones and pine straw. Looks like it's trying to grow a little bulb. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig this one up and another one that looks promising. That one looks so good. These things take have been taking like so long to grow, but this still looks really healthy. So I got a pretty big chunk around it so that I didn't interfere with any of the roots. gonna put some of the soil around the edges. So these are the white blackberries that we already removed out. I'm just replacing them. And what you see me doing here is taking the rosemary from our file cabinet planters and I'm putting them all in this center bed. What I love about rosemary is that it handles our winter. So this is the rosemary from last year, which is fantastic. Okay, so even though I did plant seeds, I went ahead and planted whole marigolds as well because I want to get ahead of the mosquito. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I read that marigolds actually deter mosquitoes as well. And so I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and so I need so much more of those. I'm so excited about having all the beautiful flowers, but especially marigolds this year because I need them to work. I need them to work some magic, all right? Um, and so I have all types of ideas on what I'm gonna be doing to combat these mosquitoes that just are horrible. Um, and so I have lots of ideas. You guys have given me lots of ideas. And so hopefully by implementing all those different things, we are going to have a more um, peaceful <laughs> gardening season. <laughs> and so that is the hope. That is the hope for sure. Another way that we are going to be combating these mosquitoes is by removing this landscape plastic, y'all. I put down plastic last year underneath these planters and then I just put pine straw directly on top. As I was thinking about it, I'm like, the water has nowhere to go. It's literally just sitting on this plastic. And so I'm wondering if I just remove all of the plastic, put down the landscape fabric so that the water can drain into the soil where it belongs. Um, 
that that would give us less standing water that we can't see. In addition to the marigolds, there were several other herbs that actually deter mosquitoes that I hadn't considered. I knew about the lemongrass, which is actually really hard to grow here. It would have to be in a pot and taken in in the winter um, because it's best grown in zone nine and above. But lemon balm goes really great here. Lavender is great for mosquitoes. Catnip, basil is really great for mosquitoes. I was happy to see that one because I love growing all the basil. Mint, lemon thyme was another one. Sage and of course, citronella. So my plan is to plant all of it. <laughs> like if I can get my hands on all of it, then I am going to plant those seeds. I want to use these file cabinet planters this year to plant all of the mint. So I use some of the leftover landscape fabric to cover the fencing and it elevated it so much. I then use the landscape pins to pin down the fabric. Next, I tucked the fabric right behind the soil. <laughs> so I decided to try out the green stock on the porch this year so we will see how that goes. How amazing, how amazing was that? Come on now, I mean, I, I love a good before and after. That That is a good before and after right there. That is, that is a legit before and after that we can all appreciate. Am I right? <laughs> 
<laughs> I hope this encourages you to look around and see what it is that you have that you can use to make a space that you will absolutely love. I am so happy that you are here. Thank you for joining us and we will see you guys next time. Hey you guys, it is Tequisha and this is our freedom song. I'm so excited about what I is. Hey you guys, this is Tequisha and this is our freedom song. I am so excited to show you what I'm going to show you today. And these bird sounds is legit loud. I'm like, this is not false right here. These are, these are the bird singing praise right now. <laughs> it's so amazing. I'm so amazing.